My dear students, other viewers and listeners, I, Professor Manohar Lal, welcome you to this lecture on LISP and Artificial Intelligence Language. Friends, in our previous lectures, we discussed a number of issues about the language LISP. We mentioned that it is a functional programming language, that is its effect is achieved through defining functions which either call other functions or themselves recursively. Secondly, we mentioned that the word LISP stands for List Processing Language. Again, we further we mentioned that this language was designed by a single great computer scientist, namely McCarthy. So with this few recalling of facts, I will now come to the topic of today's talk. Friends, we know that data structures uh, play a very important role in solving problems. We know whenever a problem is to be solved, we should have a computer program and the data on which that program is to act. So for every programming language, there have to be mechanisms by which appropriate data structures should be defined. So today, first of all, we will discuss how the language list provides mechanisms for defining data structures. In addition to that, we will discuss some other issues also. Let us have a look at the topics which we will be discussing today. Please look at the slide. The slide says that first of all we will discuss what are the data types and data structure which are built in the language list and how those are used. Secondly, there are number of functions which are built in the language list. We'll discuss those inbuilt functions next. Next, we'll be discussing some special forms. Actually, when we come to the discussion of these special forms, then we'll be able to understand what is meant by special forms. Friends, then there are a number of input and output functions which are built in the language list. We know that until unless we are able to give inputs to the computer systems and we are able to receive the outputs from the computer systems, it becomes useless. Therefore, in addition to the data structures which are provided for building data, we should also have mechanisms by which the user can give the data to the programs which are built in or whenever a computer using a particular program, written a particular language, finds out a solution, it should be able to give it as an output. So there are a number of functions which are built in, e in each programming language and in the language Lisp also, there are a number of inbuilt input-output functions which we will be discussing next. Next we will be discussing recursion. Recursion is a very important tool and actually you can say that most of the effect of language Lisp is because of the recursive, its nature, built-in recursion which is there in LISP, because of which LISP is found to be such a, an effective language. So we'll be discussing risk recursion in the language LISP. And finally, we'll discuss a number of problems which are solved by writing programs in the language LISP and we'll find out how some of the programs can be expressed more easily in the language list as compared to the other languages like C, etc. So friends, with this introduction about the topics which we will be discussing today, let us come to the discussion of what are the data types and data structures in the language list. Please look at the next slide. The data types and data structures. First of all, we should know any object that is any expression which is recognized in the language lisp as legal is called an S expression and uh, which is a shorthand for symbolic expression. Even sometimes instead of the notation, the object themselves are referred to as X expression, but it is just a matter of, uh, uh, it is not a very serious thing, uh, whether it is the notation or the objects, but every time we are actually using the notation to express objects, but sometimes 
we may be exchanging the name as expression either for objects or for the notation of the objects. The main data types and structures of list objects are shown in the diagram next. Please, as I mentioned that every legal object on which the list environment does not give an error is called an S expression, symbolic expression. So, and S expressions at the top level are divided into three different types. One is atom, the other is list, and the last is string. Friends, strings is just like any, uh, uh, any ex sequence of characters within double quotes is called a string and we know that in the case of data types and data structures it is not only the, the syntax but what operations are available on that particular data type or data structure is also very important. So in the case of string generally what are there cut, paste, etc, uh, insert, delete, a part, a word, a character, etc. So this type of operations are there on a string and once again I repeat that what is how a string is represented in the language list. A string is represented in the language list by writing any sequence of characters of the list alphabet which are enclosed between a pair of double quotes. List is, as I mentioned earlier also, is one of the most important data structures in the language Lisp. Rather you can say Lisp is mainly about lists. So the discussion of that will take later on, which will take quite some time. And therefore, we come to the third data type, which is atom. So atoms are further divided into symbol, number and character. And the numbers are divided further into the three categories, namely integer, floating point and complex numbers. I need not uh, discuss much about in numbers except their representation in list. Everybody knows what is meant by integer, what is meant by a floating point, what is meant by a complex number. So, I uh, just through an example, uh, a few examples, we will know how a number is represented in the language list. However, the symbol and character, we know characters are just like A, B, C, comma, full stop, etc. So, the main <coughs> data type which is left is symbol. Actually, symbol is a sequence of characters which don't include blank, don't include pair of parentheses, don't include some other uh, special symbols, uh, uh, special characters. So, next we'll be going to the discussion of uh, what is atom. Friends, you can see atom has three different categories, symbol, number, character. Our purpose now for of this discussion is how these entities are represented in the language Lisp. So mainly we will be telling how a symbol is represented in Lisp, how a number is represented in Lisp and how a character is represented in Lisp. So let us go to the discussion of this one. First of all, as I mentioned in the beginning itself, that number is so well known a concept that we need not define it, only we should see how a number is represented in the language Lisp. And friends, you can see uh, on the bottom line, there are a number of examples of representations of numbers in the language Lisp. For example, if it is an integer, for example, it is 87, then 87 will be written as 87. If it is a number 35.98, then the representation is second number given on the last line. And if it is a floating point, it can be represented like 11.5 raised to power minus 3, which is represented in the language Lisp like 11.5, then the notation E, uh, followed by the power or exponent, which is minus 3 in this particular case. And lastly, there is another example, 14 point. That is, you may not write any digit after the decimal point. Still, it is a valid number. And that is, in this particular case, minus 14 point 
not followed by any digit, followed by E, followed by 3 is also a valid representation of a floating point. So friends, as I mentioned at the top level, there are three types of uh, categories of S expressions or valid objects in the language LISP. Out of that, atom is one, the other